Well hello, Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to my shack and to another homebrew video. And um, thank you very much for joining me, great to see you. Today, finally, we are starting on the transmit stages of this 17 meter rig, uh, which I'm building very slowly <laughs> over my shoulder. Um, and today we're actually gonna start right at the front end of the front end of our transmitter. So we're gonna be talking microphones and our microphone preamplifier. So, I hope you enjoy. So, microphones. When I first started building uh, transceivers, this was actually one of the hardest things to find out about, about what other people that were building radios did. I mean, did they use existing commercially made microphones? Did they adapt commercially made microphones? Did they build their own microphones from scratch? You know, um, uh, and it was kind of hard because I think uh, some people were doing different things. I can only speak for myself, um, all of the above. <laughs> yeah, I've had a go at it all, really. Um, uh, I've never used really expensive microphones, to be completely honest. Um, I don't see a lot of, of point in, in spending huge amount of money on on uh, on microphones. Um, at the end of the day, whatever you're doing, if you we're sending an SSB signal, we've got to squish it down into 2.7 kilohertz. So you know <laughs> you can have the widest audio range in the world, but you've got to kind of do something um, with what you've got. Um, so, um, but having said that, there are microphones and microphones. Yeah, so obviously we want something to sound good and sound as best as we can we can get it. So when I first started, um, I, um, I bought these kind of things, these cheap little um, speaker mics, really, the kind of thing you might get with a little Baofeng or a little handheld like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I've used them, I've adapted them. I think this one, I completely gutted. All I kept was the, the just the plastic casing. I even built a new board and put everything in it, I'll get the switch, but that was it. Um, but to be honest, it was never a great microphone to start off with. So, you know, the fact I kept the housing, which wasn't brilliant, it didn't didn't really help it. So yeah, it worked, um, uh, uh, but, but you know, not, not great. I think the trouble with these things um, is that, you know, a, a lot of the space there is intended for the loudspeaker. Uh, and actually the microphone, the little electric insert, goes behind that tiny little bit there um, and most of the time you know you sound like you're fighting your way out of a paper bag or something it's it, it's never great um, so um, on the last rig that I built um, I, 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 I ditched the fist mic um, altogether and, and went for something different I bought one of these now this uh, this is a, a, a cheap microphone but but it's different it's, it's obviously a, a, a condenser one, it's um, it's marketed as a kind of uh, video conferencing, uh, podcasting kind of uh, microphone. That it comes in two flavors. I've still got the board I kept here for it, um, but because uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I joke about it being the number of the beast microphone because it's it's an SF six six six. But it it but. But it had some great reviews. I think it cost, it was less than 20 pounds, I think, on, on eBay or somewhere like Amazon or somewhere like that. Um, but it had great reviews and people were saying, well, this is a really cheap microphone, but actually it performs really well. Uh, now these weren't hams, of course, making reviews. They were um, people that were using it to record and, uh, uh, and the rest of it. Um, so, and it comes in two flavors. You can get it with a USB uh, uh, connection, which just plugs into your PC or, or, your, um, or your laptop. Or you can get it with a with a jack plug. So I bought the jack plug version. Matter of fact, I cut the jack plug off because I think it had some other stuff on it as well, and just wired on a separate, a little um, uh, 3.5 mil uh, TRS audio connector. Um, and I'm only using two uh, of those uh, actual sockets. I'm just using the ground, and I'm using uh, the line out. Well, it's. It, it's it's the audio coming out from the mic, but it's also the DC bias going in because this has got a little electric uh, capsule in it, 
um, that needs um, not much voltage, just a couple of volts or something, and a little bit of current. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that, so that's what I settled on, um, and I, I I use this and the last rig, and it's worked really well, um, and uh, I, I just did a few tests before and, and just to see how it sounded compared to the others and it has a much wider vocal range but that's not surprising really because it, it, this is a more of a recording mic you know this this the speaker's bigger than the than the uh, you know than the, uh, the the microphone bit there was they're not bothering with speakers here it's it's all kind of geared to the to the to to, to maximizing the the sound getting into that little uh, electric capsule so um yeah, so that works well. Now, clearly, because it's not fist mic, there's no PTT, so I was going to have to build an external PTT. So what I did in the last rig, the optimizer, um, is I built. Uh, I'll show you on this. Uh, I got this little tin here. So, um, so the the actual microphone plugs into here, and this is the little line out that goes into the uh, rest of the rig, the front of the rig. Um, and if I can just tip this back, you can hopefully just about see in there. So this uh, is just the uh, the bias and the, the signal out from the mic and the ground. Uh, it comes to a little uh, switch here. Um, well, that doesn't come to a switch, actually. That just connects straight to the, um, uh, to the connector going back out to the radio. Um, but the other one here that's getting switched that's the ptt line so actually there's two leads the ground and the signal coming from the mic but there's three leads that go out into the rig which is the ground signal and the ptt and um so and that worked very well i i, I just switched that now what i think i'm going to do on this new rig actually is dispense with this and and do a bit of a charlie morris <laughs> like he does in a lot of his videos and actually have a, an external ptt on the rig somewhere um so i'll just flick it up and down um which means um that this can just plug straight into the uh the mic preamp um uh, when we uh, when we get to that so um yeah so all i can say is uh works really well i've had some very good audio reports on the last rig uh using the the combination uh of this microphone and the mic preamp which um, we're going to have a look at uh, right now well microphone preamps there are loads of different designs uh, for those um, Pete Giuliano and Charlie Morris I think both have their own design which uses just one single NPN transistor so they don't have to be complicated things at all um, and yeah they, they all work um, I was just always a little bit disappointed in the ones I built that um, whilst they worked um, I just kind of wished that the audio just had a bit more oomph really um, I'm just just a bit more kind of punchy um, and so I was really interested to discover one day whilst kind of trawling through the, uh, the, the micro bitex forums, some work that some people have been doing on uh, an interesting little chip called an SSM2167. And this is uh, a little audio amplifier, a microphone preamplifier, but it actually had some audio compression built into it. I thought, oh wow, this sounds uh, interesting. And um, people had been uh, taking this and, 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 and modifying it slightly and using it at the front end of their uh, their microbitex rigs, um, just for that very reason. To to uh, because I mean that's a um, a QRP rig, and and particularly if you are building a QRP rigs, and most of the rigs I build are QRP rigs, then actually it kind of makes you 5 watts, 10 watts, whatever, go further, you know, if you if you can uh, have a, a more kind of punchy audio signal. And, and a little bit of compression um, is a useful thing. Now, I'm sure, you know, if you're not familiar with audio compression, then go and Google that, and I'm not going to go into all that now. But as, essentially what it's doing, it's narrowing down 
uh, the the dynamic range um, of of what you are transmitting. So uh, essentially, what it's doing it's 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 narrowing down the difference between a loud signal and a quiet one, right? And that that difference in, in in the volume basically it's narrowing down. So what that has the effect of doing is to put a ceiling on on how loud something can be. But it also means that things that are quieter um, will actually be louder. So it, it 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 brings the quieter things up. Now you don't want to go too mad with this because we've probably all heard um, you know people on the airwaves with ridiculously over compressed signals because it's all the same level and it it sounds rubbish really. I don't like it. And also, if you're talking to somebody for a while. It's really boring if everything is on exactly the same level. Part of what makes listening to people talk interesting is is the way that you know volume levels go up and down, and it just kind of keeps you interested in what what people are saying. So actually, um, you don't want to go too mad, but but a little bit can be a good thing because obviously it makes those quieter bits louder effectively so it just increases the power of the whole signal when you get it through to the the, the transmit uh, amplifier stage of, of your rig um, so i was interested in this so let me show you um uh, uh what uh i built uh and then i'll show you the schematic then and uh, how you can build one yourself so here is my little mic preamp compressor module um, so the uh, the audio signal comes in from the microphone on the right hand side um, that blue wire you see connected there which goes off here um, in the end down here <laughs> um, that blue wire is actually for um, the PTT now as I've said um, I'm not going to use that. I'll probably get rid of that wire, actually. Um, but if you were using um, a fist mic um, with a built-in PTT, then that would uh, that would be absolutely fine for that, and that would be wired up um, to to accept that. Um, I'm uh, I'm going to do something different with my um, uh, uh, PTT and have it switched separately, so I don't need uh, that that actual connection. Um, the little uh, module. Um, is the SSM2167. I mean, the, the chip itself, you can see there, is that tiny little thing with the 10 pins splayed out. But And you can buy them like that if you want and, and build the whole thing up from scratch. But uh, it's far easier to buy the little breakout board, the little red board you can see there, um, with all the, the surface mount stuff uh, already soldered on. Um, and uh, and that's easy to incorporate then in uh, in, in your own designs. And uh, and I'll go through that in a minute when I, I show you this schematic. Um, but you can see um, uh, down here we've got a, a, a little uh, voltage regulator because um, this board takes 5 volts. Um, so that's a 5 volt uh, voltage regulator. Um, I've got a little trim pot there. That doesn't do anything with regard to the compression. All of that is handled actually on the board. All that does, it, it's just controls the amount of gain basically it's the amount of 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 uh, audio you're putting out through into the next stage which in our case is the is the balance modulator so uh, you can tweak that accordingly to make sure you get the right uh, levels um i built it on a bit of this um uh kind of matrix board here so all these little um uh, little isolated uh uh, holes um, uh, are isolated so you know that it's not like strip board where you have a whole line they're, they're all separate so you have to make your own connections up separately but that's okay um, that's fine and uh, oh, it's very cheap I just buy a whole load of it from China and they come in different sizes whatever so that, that's quite a convenient um, uh, little thing and then we take the audio out uh, uh, at the end here um, so you can see there's not a lot of extra components there's a few resistors uh, there's some capacitors around the the voltage regulator but you know there's not a lot to do i mean once you've bought the actual little red board um it's just um uh, just connecting a few other things and uh, and and you've got it really and uh, and it works 
surprisingly well. So um, let me uh, show you the schematic and show you what you can actually do to, to, to build this yourself. But it doesn't take too long to, uh, to put together. So I first came across uh, this SSM2167 uh, with regard to um, using it uh, uh, in your uh, transceiver um, by uh, John, VK2ETA. Uh, as I said on the uh, on the microbitex.net uh, website, and there's some more information there, and there are others as well that have um, uh, done other modifications and things. And this was John's original um, schematic, which I've adapted. You'll see in a minute because obviously I'm I'm not using a, a, a microbitex. I'm, I'm I'm doing my own thing, um, but it's uh, it's good information. Um, uh, and the other information which I uh, thought was quite important was to get hold of the uh, the analog devices uh, data sheet for that particular chip because there's some information there about compression ratios and and the rest of it um, which is good to know um, so um, that uh, if you can get hold of those that's good and I'll, I can put a um, uh, certainly a link uh, in the description to those things let me show you the schematic that I use my version of John's schematic and apologies for the, uh, the the rough pencil sketch here but hopefully you'll be able to see um, what I've got going on here um, so as I said uh, I put a, a 5 volt regulator in here and actually if we just trace uh, this so we, 12 volts coming in 5 volts coming out um, this 470 ohm resistor I think is just a current limiting uh, resistor so it, it will basically limit the current to 10 milliamps uh, and as you see I think it draws about 6 milliamps actually so that's that's fine um, and then uh, so that's that's being fed uh, into the, the, the VCC the microphone is connected here but but across the microphone from the the microphone uh, a positive terminal to the positive of the VCC is another resistor a 4.7k ohm resistor and that's because remember it's an electric mic so it needs a DC bias and as you would probably guess the same numbers just with the decimal point in a different place um, if this 470 ohm resistor limits the current to 10 milliamps then by strapping a 4.7 k ohm resistor over the input to the microphone from the the, the input to the, uh, the the power into the board you're taking it down another order of magnitude so that's basically limiting the current to one milliamp then going into the uh, into the mic which is is fine and actually uh, takes the voltage down to um, about a couple of volts or something which is ideal you want you want a little bit of voltage um, over the uh, uh, dropping over the electric uh, and a little bit of current but not too much and that seems to be very happy uh, with that and there's capacitor to ground and there's not a lot else really on the output as you saw there's a 10 k ohm trim pot uh, and as i said all that does is just just vary how much signal you're sending out uh, of the stage to the modulator now on the actual board itself soldered onto the board are uh, a number of other components and the ones just to draw your attention to are r1 and r2 now over here I've roughly transcribed from the data sheet what those resistors do. Now R1 controls the compression ratio and R2 uh, controls the, uh, the noise gate. So um, what some people have done is they've desoldered R1. Uh, it comes with a, a 15k ohm resistor already on it. That's what R1 is. Um, but some people have taken that off and they put other resistances uh, over there to get a higher compression ratio. 
I haven't. I don't think John did either, but 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 some others have. So I've left them exactly as they are. But I just noted them down there because it's interesting. You can play around with that if you're so minded to do so. Um, uh, but as it is, you'll get a two to one ratio, and uh, and yeah, that just makes the audio a lot. Uh, a lot more punchier but that's it so it, it's really really very simple these these uh ssn 2167 modules are not very expensive you can buy them you know all the usual places ebay aliexpress banggood etc and yeah uh they they work really well so um by all means um uh get one and have, have a play around with it and um and see if you can get your uh, audio a little bit more uh, punchy and uh, and see what you think so the proof, of course, <laughs> of the pudding is always in the eating. So just to finish off, what I'll do is just uh, demonstrating now putting this thing through its paces uh, to ensure that it actually does work. Right, so we're on the test bench. And let me just explain this um, mess of wires here. So um, the yellow probe here is connected uh, to this um, red lead here so that's connected to the output of the module so after it's been through the uh, compression and the amplification uh, and the blue probe is connected to the input so that's going to be a very weak signal indeed because that's just the signal coming straight in from the microphone and uh, we're running that uh, at uh, 12 volts and as you can see, it's drawing about six milliamps. Um, and of course, that's going through the uh, nine volt regulator. Uh, sorry, the five volt regulator. Uh, and let's have a look at the scope then. Let's just move this mic lead out of the way. And have a look here. So, okay. So I've got those traces there now you can see that even before i pick the microphone up the uh, the top trace is twitching uh because that's the output trace and uh obviously that's going to be a much stronger signal and then i'm just going to pick up the microphone right okay so now i'm talking in to the microphone and i will and then as you can see just as i'm speaking here um, that top trace is very responsive here, and you can see the bottom one twitching, um, but obviously there's a lot more um, uh, movement on the top, which is what we want, because we want some amplification here. And um, right, so I'm going to whistle down into here now, so hopefully you'll see uh, those uh, sine waves uh, occurring on both traces, but obviously on the top trace, um, they, they're going to be a lot bigger. Get very good at whistling a, a one kilohertz um, <laughs> sine wave <laughs> doing this. Um, so I'll try that again. Now you saw, you might have just seen momentarily that sine wave is a little bit square when it starts off, um, and that is uh, when the compression kicks in. So, um, and the point of obviously the compressor is that uh, it will limit uh, how how powerful the signal can be. Um, and uh, which has, of course, as we've said, the, the effect of, of raising the kind of uh, the lower uh, the lower limit while sacrificing uh, some of the dynamics. Um, but uh, but this is not too bad. So let's try that again. Yeah, just momentarily, but then you get a nice side wave. So that's great. Um, so uh, that's that's very good. And just in case you're in any doubt, um, we'll just connect a little speaker in and uh, you'll hear it for yourself. Now, this looks like a cassette tape. <laughs> is a little um, very cheap and cheerful um, uh, audio amplifier that somebody bought me, which I think was intended to be plugged into your phone or something. Um, but it's great just for doing a rough and ready test um, of, uh, of audio circuits to see whether you're actually getting any output so please don't expect good quality here because lord knows what the impedance uh, is um <laughs> it certainly won't be what's coming out at the end of this uh this uh, audio amplifier 
and uh, and compressor module but never mind that's fine you'll you'll hear at least uh that it's it's working one two one two one two testing testing one two three one two three okay well certainly not bbc audio but uh, at least you can hear here as well as see um that it is actually producing what it's supposed to be doing well i hope you found that of some interest and uh, you know, I hope maybe I've inspired one or two people to have a play around with that um, when you build your own transceivers. Um, next time, we are going to start looking at the transmit amplifiers, how we take our tiny little signal coming out of that second mixer and start to really beef it up until we can send it into the power amplifier and the antenna and out into the world. So um, until then, look after yourself. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye-bye.